Today in Rob's garage, we're installing Borschlag adjustable camber plates on the E92 M3. Welcome back to Rob's Garage. I'm Rob, this here is my garage. I need to create a lot more negative camber uh, for the track. I'm running about negative seven degrees with some Dynan fixed camber plates and it just is not nearly enough. Uh, I've recently upgrading to some larger 10 and a half inch wide uh, wheels, which will definitely not fit up front with only negative seven degrees of camber. So follow along, let's see if we can't get this thing done today. Okay, first we need to loosen the wheels jack the car up and support it on jack stands. Door. Next you're going to want to take your jack and position it underneath the strut assembly here at the rotor and give it a little tension so that as you're loosening the spring it doesn't push down and fall to the ground. On the driver's side you'll need to disconnect the headlight leveling sensor. It takes two 10 millimeter wrenches. Next you'll need a 16 millimeter socket and likely a breaker bar to disconnect the nut that holds the end link onto the strut. Once you've broken the nut loose, you'll need a 16 millimeter open end wrench on the back to hold the end link. And then disconnect the nut. And then push the end link out. Here's where a specialty tool comes into play. Got a 22 millimeter Schwaben socket with this interesting opening so that we can put a seven millimeter Allen key in here to hold the strut down. The way it works, you wanna hold the strut in place. So you, don't, you don't want that to spin while you loosen the nut. Takes a little bit of time, but eventually you'll be able to pull that top nut right off. These sockets will run you about 18 to 20 bucks, uh, or you can get a full set for 55, 60 dollars. I got, I got a full set of ECS for I think around 55 dollars. I'll use a 13 millimeter socket, probably with a extension bar for this first one to remove the three nuts holding strut assembly to the chassis. Get started. Again, make sure you've got that jack underneath with some tension on it, holding up the assembly so it doesn't come loose. At this stage, it's basically being held up by the jack. Now we're going to slowly loosen the jack. So now I've got it loose, and you're going to twist or rotate the top hat so I can just barely get by the inner fender. There we go. Take this top one off, and we'll put our new adjustable camper plate on top. Real quick uh, disclaimer. I'm not a professional mechanic, so take my advice at your own risk. I'm just trying to share my uh, experience with other people. The other thing, word of caution, uh, you know, I've got aftermarket coilovers on this. So if you're installing these camber plates on OEM struts, 
you may need to use a spring compressor. I, I used one when I changed out the OEMs for these Bilstein B16 dampers. Um, not 100% sure, but just make sure you do your research. So here we have the two top hats. The original OEM with the Dynan fixed camber plate on top and the new Vorschlag adjustable camber plate. So they look about the same in height. The Vorschlag might be a little lower, which means I may have to adjust my ride height slightly. But let's take a look at the features of the Vorschlag. Well, the Dynan was fixed here and you know, you can't do anything. It, it is what it is. The Vorschlag is adjustable. So here, and this is on the car, you can give it more negative camber or neutral camber. You can also adjust the caster with these bolts here. Another great feature of these Vorschlag camber plates is that you can change out the bottom depending on what type of spring you're running. So this right here is a coilover suspension, but it still has a, a uh, it's a track-based spring, but it's not a full race spring. It's still what we call progressive. If I were to upgrade to a true race coilover system, then I would have to get a different bottom piece here, depending on the type of spring I'm running. But you can still keep your top camber plate and just change out the bottom. That's my understanding. Lower. Suspension back a little more. Just enough. You don't want to put a lot of tension on that. Down there, here. Slide these on top. Just like so. And twist. Make sure you spin it correctly so that the front arrow is facing forward. These are also marked left and right, left being the driver's side, right being the passenger. There we go. Start putting this nut on where it was applied. Tighten it just to hold it in place a little bit so we can not have to rely just on the jack. Now when you first put this in, you might notice that some of the bolts don't come all the way through. They'll look a little shorter and you'll wonder why. It's just because they got pushed down in the process. But once you get one started, and the time you start tightening, they all start pulling up. All right, now with these three nuts loosely on, we're going to tighten this bolt down onto the damper. So I'm making sure that this isn't spinning. Once I go to torque it down, we'll hold the uh, Allen key on there. Watch that, make sure. The damper's not spinning. It looks like we've got the nut on. It's pulling the damper up. Okay, good enough for a minute. Now we're going to lower the jack and then loosen these a bit so we can adjust the camber, move it left to right. All right, before we torque everything down, I've loosened these nuts just enough to where now I can slide it. As you can see there. That's about as full negative camber as I'll be able to get on this. There are some markings right here. Be able to set your marking to say, all right, for the track, I want it here, and for the street, you know, I want it here, or what have you. So I'm just going to kind of set it a little neutral, get to the alignment shop, and we'll have the experts help me configure it for the track. Okay, moment of truth now. Did we get more negative camber? Very, very tight fit with just neutral camber. Okay, now I'm gonna slide this over. You'll see the wheel actually move. See how much more camber you get there. Look at that. Straight, negative. I don't hear any rubbing there. 
only at full lock is it rubbing on the rear inner fender. And the front too. But that's full lock. Not normally hitting full lock on the racetrack. Finally, don't forget to torque these down. Your uh, top mount for the front strut is uh, 47 foot-pounds of torque, seven millimeter Allen key here. And use a torque wrench to tighten that down to 47 foot-pounds of torque. Then the front strut tower bolts, these three here, 13 millimeters, torque those down to 25 foot-pounds of torque. And finally, down below, the top bolt that go goes onto the end link. Remember, you'll need a 19 millimeter in the rear to hold it, to stabilize it, and then a 16 millimeter here. You tor torque that down to 42 foot-pounds of torque. And on the driver's side, don't forget, you're going to need to reconnect your headlights uh, adjuster if you have one. After installing the adjustable camber plates on the BMW, I took the car in for an alignment, and here's the results. Negative 3.7 degrees of camber up front. It's a big improvement over the negative 0.7 that I had previously. Well, that's it tonight from Rob's Garage. Can't wait to get this thing on the track and see how it performs now with a proper track camber. Hope you learned something new. If you did, hit the like button. Do yourself a favor and hit the subscribe button so you can see more DIY videos in the future on what we're going to continue doing this track car. We've got a lot of maintenance coming up for the Ferrari, the Corvette, some repairs for the Mini, and a lot of uh, maintenance coming up for that R6 over there. So see you on down the road.